Hey Bubble family, welcome back to the channel. So it's been a minute. What a week. <laughs> Actually, hmm, has it been a week or was it less than a week? Because I think I did a video last Tuesday. But I have had, and I will put a timestamp for the people that do not like the waffle, because I know some of you do, some of you don't. Uh, so I've had a lovely week off. Uh, I've had a wonderful, wonderful birthday. And I want to say thank you to the amazing messages, happy birthday messages, the emails, the cards, um, and some gifts that I was sent as well. Um, I really am, I feel so blessed and so lucky to have just, not only just the amazing friends and family that I have in my kind of personal life, but to now be doing this with you guys and to have this kind of community that we're building which i call the bubble family and and i know that so many of you love being part of this um and receiving all of these kind of messages that i got and it really does make me feel so proud and um you know i love coming on here and i love doing these videos and i love connecting with you all and it really does make the world just seem a little bit more bearable at times. So I just want to say a huge thank you to every single one of you that have continued to support me and, and have wished me happy birthday. And we are nearly at 15,800 subscribers. I cannot believe, I cannot believe it, how quickly it's growing. It's crazy. Um, so thank you to the people that have, the new people that have come on board and a big, big thank you to my ever faithful people that have been with me from the very beginning. So this video, I thought, uh, I know that a lot of you are waiting for me to kind of do a bit more of a deep dive into the Harry and Meghan stuff. I will be doing that, I promise you. But there just needs to be a bit of a pause from Amber Heard. She needs to stop. Just stop, please. Because, <laughs> because just when I kind of have in my head what I'm going to do, she comes along and I kind of think, oh, no, I kind of really feel like I need to talk about that as well. Because I just feel so angry. I feel so angry. But I'm not going to get into that now because you know what to do. If you don't, by now you should. Grab that drink of choice. And as usual, I've forgotten mine. Because <laughs> I do every time. <laughs> I'm terrible at advertising my own bubble mug. Rubbish. Um, tea. Coffee. Water, milk, orange juice, or is it, in the spirit of Johnny Depp, a glass of rum or champagne? Maybe you're celebrating because you know it is five o'clock somewhere. So grab that drink and let's dive right in. Monday, Monday, and I feel like this is possibly in line with my bit of a Monday meltdown. So it's been actually quite hard taking a week off from you guys. I really do miss doing the videos, but I have to force myself to recharge my batteries. Um, so Amber Heard, Ugh. this woman, because actually, this is what I actually want to talk about. I want to talk about narcissist revenge because I've had a few people say to me, you know, can we do a video on narcissist revenge? I really want to understand why they do what they do. Um, what does it look like? <laughs> well, what you're seeing now from Amber Heard, this is what it looks like. Um, Harry and Meghan, Oprah interview, this is what it looks like. Um, but these are people in the public eye. And as many of you know, I also do the references to help you understand of what it can potentially look like to you in your world it's a smear campaign so this is what they will do obviously these two are celebrities so they're doing it on a global scale but in your world if you have dealt with a narcissist you will know probably that they will go all out as a smear campaign against you and people have said to me but why why bother you know, why do they hoover you back in? Why do they keep doing this? Because they're not done with you. And because they haven't got the outcome they um, 
and in a way it's very childlike it's you know if you think even back to kind of when we're at school you know that kind of concept of what bully how bullies behave you know they want to turn people against you so behind closed doors they're kind of talking about you behind your back you know the kind of comments that they might make um you know if it's a friend um they might have di they might divulge a secret that you've told them something that's personal um that you've told them whether it be that you you slept with this boy or or something's going on in your home life and what they will do is they will tell somebody and they will start spreading that around with the aim to create other people to turn against you because they need that that validation this is all part of their narc supply they need it like the air that they breathe um, and this is what you're seeing from amber heard what angers me in regards to Amber and even the likes of Megan is that they will utilize very serious um, stories, very serious campaigns, um, charities that are really fighting for a serious subject. And they will use these stories, they will use uh, survivors of something that's traumatic victims of something um for themselves so what you've seen with megan she has jumped on the bandwagon whereas amber she's jumped on the me too movement Amber uh, uh megan <laughs> uh has jumped on the black lives matter movement and uh, many other causes um to garner that sympathy we all know that with megan she didn't portray herself as being a woman of colour. Uh, on her acting resume, uh, she portrayed herself as Caucasian. And this is fact. This is not just hearsay. This is fact. Um, and it seemed that the only time this kind of come out was when the whole situation with her father walking her down the aisle. Um, but then, you know, the only person that seemed to come to her wedding was her, her mother, who is a woman of colour. Um, and then, of course, then the whole victim narrative of, you know, the royal family being racist um, and so on and so on. So that's that's kind of what Megan has kind of done. And again, I will do this deep dive into this behaviour. Amber Heard, similar thing. And I feel... I feel so deeply, deeply upset by what she's doing because she herself is damaging people, survivors of abuse. She is damaging people who have or in the midst of going through something, whether they need to be taking someone to court, um, especially women, because she is a woman, um, and she's dangering this kind of women are not to be believed. Now, you know, I'm not saying that that there are not people who lie, and of course, they, you know, everything should be looked into, of course it should. But ultimately, you know, it is not, it is not... I feel right to automatically assume that someone's lying. You know, I think we have to, we always give people that benefit of the doubt. You know, if someone comes to you and says, you know, look, I'm, uh, this has happened to me. Um, I've been, um, you know, obviously I can't say the words because YouTube, but you know, you know, like I've been abused in some way. Um, you know, you're not going to kind of go, yeah, you're lying. You know, unless you know, for absolute fact that the person is so initially you like amber heard you you believe them you know because your you know your your brain doesn't automatically go into this is something that someone is going to automatically lie about it's such a serious thing and especially given that this person is in the public eye and i think that's why her story was so believable initially it's because you sort of think why would you say this so publicly if you haven't got the evidence to back this why why would you you know someone that's so high profile coming out against someone else who's so high profile why would you do this if you there wasn't some truth to this if this this wasn't you know what happened you know especially with someone against you know johnny depp who has you know a lot of 
money a lot of um people in the industry you know this this is a huge thing you know and so i think automatically this is why people jump to her kind of believing her and obviously then you know everything else uh, as we know has developed since then and now it's obviously come out that she's by all accounts lied embellished you know on, on so many levels so here she's come out and again what we're talking about narc revenge she's come out and she's done this interview now the reason why she is doing what she's doing is because and this all comes down to one person johnny depp johnny depp ended things with her she wasn't ready to let go yet she wasn't done she hasn't got a new mark uh she hadn't you know i think she's definitely tried it with uh elon musk probably even james franco um but they didn't take so the person that she deems as in her because because not you know narcissists deem people as weak people the people are weaker than them so she would have seen johnny depp as a very weak person so he's the perfect target you know quite damaged um is literally allowing her to behave the way she's behaved without stepping in and kind of going you know what you've done that to me once we're done you know because most people would you know if someone hit them uh screamed in their face acted kind of crazy most people that are have got themselves kind of together and are emotionally uh and mentally mature would have been like yeah no thanks you uh, there is you need to go and seriously get help I don't want that kind of crazy in my life, so I'm not going to be any part of that. But unfortunately, when you sometimes come from a very damaged background where you don't have a real sense of who you are, you don't trust your instincts, you don't trust yourself, you will allow someone to manipulate you because they will they will kind of create it to be that they're such a victim or it's your fault that you'll believe them. So she wasn't done with him. And this is what happens in your lifetime. This is, you know, in your life, if, if this is happening to you, if the narcissist isn't done with you, they will enact revenge. They will turn nasty. If you try to take control of your life, of your surroundings, your family, your friends, and you're turning people against them in their eyes, they will go all out and they do not care what they do or what they say. And we've seen this. This woman is, is willing to lie, to perjure herself on the stand to get people to believe her. And this is what they're capable. They will set things up. They will, they will do anything. And this is why a lot that's why it can really delve into the realms of sociopathy and psychopathy because they will do the most heinous things at times to get you someone else to believe them you know and like i say you know we've seen this you know the way she has lied and manipulated got her sister to lie where she's orchestrated and and planted kind of evidence and things like that she's done all of these things to get her story to be believed because her image her herself is everything so you cannot damage that and they will come out in the absolute worst case of vengeance which is what you're now seeing you know with amber heard you know this utilizing the me too movement to garner sympathy she doesn't care she does not care that there are real victims of abuse out there and that she could be damaging them because in her eyes she's not so she really really doesn't care that there will be people that are kind of gunning for her because of this you know so this is why we're seeing these interviews now the first stage was johnny ended it she tried to set him up because there's this now this audio tape where she's gone to the hotel room. Uh, she's trying to set him up um, and that fails. So that's the first thing. The second thing is she then apparently, uh, well not apparently, it's there in black and white. She writes an email basically saying to him, well, if you don't give me, bearing in mind she wanted nothing. But she writes him an email saying, well, if you don't give me 50,000, I think uh, uh, spousal support monthly. I want the Range Rover. 
I want, uh, I think, uh, whether it was one of the penthouses or, or some kind of, uh, one of one of his properties, you know, basically asking for all these things. If you don't do this, then I'm going to go public with the with the abuse, you know, with the uh, the allegations. Well, he didn't bite. He didn't go, OK, yeah, I'll do that. So that was the second thing. So that didn't work. So the next thing she does is she turns, she go, I think seven days later, which she says is, I decided to fight back. No, what that was, was that Johnny basically said, no, no, you're not going to blackmail me. Um, and so she's like, right, okay, so I'm going to tip off TMZ. And that sets the ball rolling. I think what she didn't expect is I don't think she expected Johnny to fight back. I think she genuinely thought because, of you know, at this point, everyone was, well, not everyone, but a lot of people were kind of going, you know, you know, Am Amber Heard's telling the truth. You know, he was dropped from Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, he was um, started to kind of be outed, you know, like the, 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 the Sun newspaper then published that horrendous article. Um, and it just kind of snowballed from there. You know, this would be a point where he probably could have been like, you know what, I'll give you whatever you want to stop this. But he didn't. He was like, no, I'm going to fight back. I'm not having this is my name. This is this is this is my reputation that you are damaging here. So she didn't. I don't believe she didn't believe that he would fight back. But he did. So, of course, this is why for her, she's got nastier and nastier and nastier because he has fought back. She has gone and done the thing she's not expecting him to do. So all the time that happens, they are not going to back down. And she's not going to back down now. She's not going to back down now. This is not going to be the last we see of this. Um, you know, and this is why I think the first then thing was obviously then coming out and lying and perjuring your sa yourself on the stand there you know if you obviously i have to say allegedly but apparently they hired a private detective to dig up dirt on johnny depp and they and the only i think the only person they come up with was ellen barkin who 10 years ago dated him and he ended it with her and she just looks very bitter on the stand and the only thing that she can recall is he threw a wine bottle in her general direction because he got mad well, I, I'm not being funny. I've thrown things when I've got mad. Or I'm, or I'm not throwing a wine bottle, but I've thrown probably a hairbrush or something. That's it. But what angers me more now is, and I will put the little clip, I think, here in a minute, where she basically says, uh, because she's done this interview now with Susanna Guthrie, I believe her name is, and Susanna Guthrie asks her about his, you know, what, you know, nobody else has come out in the whole time, uh, all the years of him dating somebody, there has not been anyone that has come out and said, Johnny Depp abused me. And her response is, which you will see in a minute, is, well, look what happened to me when I come forward. Would you? And I was just watching this and I was, I was just, well, they, that's the point when I wanted to throw something at the TV. But then I was like, no, I don't want to break my TV. I was like, how dare you? How dare you speak for people who have been abused, for domestic violence survivors? How dare you speak for them? Because you are not one. Not, not with Johnny Depp. I don't know what's happened in her previous life, what her, you know, her home life was like. Can't answer that. But in this particular incident, you know, she is not what she has portrayed Johnny Depp to be. But speaking, you cannot speak for other people. You can get behind something. You can get behind this very worthy cause. You know, I'm going to get behind this very worthy cause because I feel that it's something that needs to be highlighted. Absolutely. But when you are putting your interjecting yourself into something and speaking for them, you know, you have no right to do that because not only then you're taking away from someone's experience. You know, you're taking your you're, you're 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 interjecting yourself into their story, you know, and they have a right to speak about their story how they choose. Um, but to say that the exes of Johnny Depp are not going to come forward because of how she was treated um, is just absolutely astonishing to me. First and foremost, she's missing the huge part of the fact that. 
they did come forward. They did come forward. They came forward in the... Winona Ryder and a Vanessa Parody came forward in the UK trial and said he was not abusive. Nothing had happened then. At this point, Amber Heard was, was kind of being believed. Uh, you know, the, the tapes were kind of changing things. But in the in the media, it was, you know, and even now, you know. So they did come forward. Kate Moss, she did come forward and say, no, he didn't push me down the stairs. In fact, he's never been violent to me. So they did come forward. So in Amber Heard's own words, in a way, they must be lying. Like everyone else is lying. She's telling the truth, but everyone else that's come forward, the randos and everyone else that's come forward, they must be lying. Um, and again, this is down to the narcissism where she is taking zero accountability for anything. Everyone else is to blame. Everyone else is lying. Everyone else has been paid to lie. Um, but, oh, but, but her team... Uh, you know, and again, this kind of thing of, you know, I spoke up against power. I spoke truth to power. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> because the jury found you guilty. They they, they be didn't believe you. So the only thing you did was speak about your version of events, which didn't match up to the evidence, didn't match up to anyone else's version of events. You know, the police officers, which I guess were all lying. Um, the people that, uh, I think one of Johnny's, um, who were not paid by him, but flew all the way across from the UK to the States to testify. Um, oh, he's lying. Because, um, yeah, because I'm sure that, you know, every single every, every single person wanted to get on the stand and purge themselves um, for Johnny Depp. You know, Kate Moss didn't need to. She could have been like, no, I'm not getting involved. Didn't No, she didn't. She She did that because she wanted the truth to be told. But, or she's lying. And this is exactly what a narcissist will do. They will do whatever it takes. That's why I am so passionate about trying to get people to watch any video which highlights a narcissist. Because it's not just the abuse they put you through when you're in that relationship with them. It's what they do afterwards until they're done with you. It is one, in my opinion, it is one of the worst cases of abuse that you can receive from somebody because it isn't just what they do in that, you know, this psychological warfare. It's the fact that they they target everybody in your life. You know, they, they will turn you against people. You will be turned against your closest friends and family um, without even realizing it. And then if anyone gets in their way, if anyone stands up against them, like I'm pretty sure anyone that would have stood up for Johnny, she would have tried to poison. I mean, we've seen her try and do it with even with his own children. She needs to monopolize the attention away from his children because she can't stand them having more attention than her. So, she, you know, you've, you've heard her on the tapes crying, threatening to, you know, do something, you know, this is when they're threatening to do something silly to themselves because they want, they need that attention away from whoever it is, you know, and this is why they're doing what they're doing. And then quick as they started it, if they have found somebody else, it will stop. But not before they have done a huge number on your self-esteem, on the way you think, they will create you to be so mistrusting of anyone again because they they do such a huge job in hurting you. And this is what she's kind of doing now. You know, Johnny didn't let it go. He took her to court. And in the, the court of public opinion, she watched as she was slated everywhere. And she hated that. A narcissist will hate that. You know... Obviously, this is on a global scale, you know, but they cannot stand anyone not believing them. So rather than kind of putting their head down and being like, you know what, this is really bad. I need to just slink away and and forget about it um, and wait for the dust to kind of everything to settle and, and everything to blow over. Oh, no, no, a narcissist won't do that. So this is what we're seeing now. You know, she could quite happily now go off. 
especially given the fact that Johnny Depp has sort of been circulating the fact that he may not go for the money for her because it was never about the money. So she could just think, Do you know what? I've got off really lucky here. I'm just going to take myself off. I'm going to focus on being a mum to my daughter. You know, even that's not enough to keep her focused. You know, so then what she does then is that, you know, she's probably super obsessed with how she's being portrayed on social media because she has been absolutely torn to shreds on social media. No one believes her apart from the odd few people and her, like I say, her flying monkey Eve Barlow. Um, so then she's, uh, uh, you know, out pops Elaine after the trial and Elaine does her little circuit. Um, and actually, interestingly enough, nobody else, no other, none of the other lawyers have spoken out, but only Elaine. Um, and looks even more ridiculous, even more ridiculous. Um, and so, of course, that hasn't done anything. That hasn't achieved anything. That hasn't got the amber, you know, the goal of, oh, people are still starting to now believe her. Um, oh, that's not enough now. And if the rumours are to be believed that she is out of Aquaman 2, which I think she is, I think they have, they've either... What I would imagine is they've possibly, uh, they will mention her, but she won't be seen on screen. So I think that's, I don't think they're going to, the cost of replacing her in Aquaman 2 is probably going to be too expensive. So I think what they're probably going to do, because I imagine the storyline is something along the lines of she's pregnant with his child, um, with Aquaman's child, I believe. Um, so they will keep her that will be the kind of reason to not have her on camera. So she will be in the storyline, but she won't be there. She won't be seen. Um, or you'll see like the back of her head or something along, or she'll be kind of, she'll be, you'll see her in the hospital bed or, but it, you won't, it won't be her. Um, so I think that's kind of what they'll do. They do some very clever editing um, rather than um, have her in there. Because I think they would, this would be a huge, huge backfire because we're looking at, I think now over, it's well over 4 million signatures now that have asked for her to be removed. And you put that in the scale of this interview that she's now done of Dateline, which was 2.3, I believe. And it was 0.2 um, on the stats. It's done appallingly. People were not interested People are not interested in her and her lies, her continuous lies, victimhood, trying to get the narrative changed in her favour. Nobody cares. People are sick of it. Um, so this is why narcissists do what they do. And again, I refer to even Meghan and Harry. When you look at the Oprah interview, they didn't get what they wanted. They have had they have got so many people turning against them. So they have to keep spinning, spinning, spinning the PR to create these positive, you know, stories that come out. Oh, a source has said how, you know, they're doing all this work and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and it's no nothing's enough. You know, everything that they do literally is people don't care. So that's why they then go out on the attack again. You know, and like I say, I will do more more videos on these. So, like I say, guys, this is why it's so important that if you are in a relationship with a narcissist, to do everything you can to keep people on side. Do not let them turn your family because you know this is what they would they want to isolate you. So do not let them turn your family against you, your friends against you. Keep people in your inner circle, people that you trust, you know. And the most important thing is if you can is really don't get into a relationship with them in the first place. You know, like I say, always work on yourself. Make sure that you know yourself inside out. So when they try the same gaslighting, the manipulation, you know, you are so um, together that you kind of go, yeah, no, I didn't say that. I didn't do that. And trust yourself enough, no matter what they say, that you can kind of go, yeah, no, thanks. I'm not interested. I don't want to date somebody like you. If you're not afraid to be on your own, you're not afraid to let somebody go. You know, if being on you, because a lot of the time people are so afraid to be alone um, that they that they will stay in a possibly a toxic relationship because they would rather that than be be lonely. Work on yourself so you're not lonely being by yourself. 
become your own best friend. You know, so you don't allow these type of people to get in. If Johnny Depp had worked on himself and didn't have all of the things that was going on, I'm pretty sure that as soon as Amber Heard started doing what she was doing, he would have been like, yeah, I don't want any, any of that in my relationship. No thanks. So, uh, you know, and she never would have got a foot in the door. But unfortunately, like a lot of people, he didn't. And he got caught up in it. And here he is now. Like I said, this is not going to be the last that we see from Amber Heard. I think, you know, the public are already turning against her, have turned against her. The media seem to still be spinning. And this is why I think the media need to actually stop. You know, I think the media, it's disgusting that they are giving this woman a platform to keep spouting her lies. She is damaging real victims of domestic violence and the media are also doing that so they need to stop allowing this woman and giving her the airtime you know you they should all be ashamed of themselves cut her supply off you know because the next thing we know there's going to be a book there'll be there'll be other things just stop just just let her go off and work on herself and heal and just stop giving her the airtime because none of us are interested anymore. We don't want any part of it. So, so yeah. So, guys, that is kind of my thoughts on Narc Revenge. So, let me know, as always, what you think in the comments. Have you experienced narcissist revenge? How did you, you know, because your story will help others. How did you get out of it? Um, because everybody is different, you know. And, again, like I say, these are just my own thoughts and opinions based on my professional side as well you know it doesn't mean to say that i am absolutely correct in what i'm saying here you know so you know you are your uh, you are the best person to know about yourself you know so have you got any tips for people you know put them in the comments you know because we're not alone here we're all in this together so, as always, I will see you tomorrow with another video where hopefully, if Amber Heard doesn't do anything else and there's no other drama, I will start doing my videos on Harry and Meghan that I know that you guys have been waiting for. So, as always, I love you all. Thank you to everybody who's bought me a cup of tea. Um, for everyone who has carried on supporting me, um, don't forget, I will be doing my live as usual with Trev on Friday. Um, and yeah, in the meantime, I love you guys and I will see you then. Mwah. Bye, Bubble family.